So I'm here in Chicago for ASCO 2014. It's been a very, very exciting year for oncology in general, but in particular in the domain of renal cell carcinoma. Really honored today to have my colleague here, Dr. Guru Sampavde, who's an associate professor at the University of Alabama. Guru, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. Dr. Sampavde, any trials that you're excited about for other therapies in renal cell carcinoma uh, that are coming along now? Right, the, uh, the other key agent in late-line development is cabozantinib which is an oral drug that blocks uh, angio uh, angiogenesis in different ways, in addition to the VEGF receptors, which pesopinib and sinitinib block. Uh, it also blocks a different receptor called a MET, HEMI-MET receptor. So that drug is being looked at in a big randomized trial in comparison uh, with Evrolimus, uh, and that study is ongoing right now. Excellent, excellent. So tell us a little bit more about uh, cabozantinib. Uh, have you had some experience with the drug and other diseases? Uh, yes, uh, cabozantinib is approved in uh, thyroid cancer, in uh, medullary thyroid cancer. So I have used it in thyroid cancer, uh, but not in uh, kidney cancer at the moment. And I'm going to ask you a really loaded question, and this is kind of a tough one. But let's say we look five, ten years out, we have an approval for nivolumab, we have an approval for cabozantinib. This is assuming those studies are positive. How would you sequence therapy then? Well, then it gets very complicated. So uh, these are always tough questions when you have lots of agents that's good for patients, but it also makes the sequencing issue um, a conundrum. So we, you know, very often don't have good prospective data to show what the optimum sequencing is. So essentially at that moment, it becomes an issue of the efficacy and toxicity, balancing the risks, patient choice, um, comorbidities that might influence the choice of the drug. So I think that, and, and hopefully a biomarker that will help tell us, uh, for example, expression of the PDL1 on the tumor might uh, suggest that the, these patients may benefit, may respond better with the PD-1 inhibitors. It's not an all or none phenomenon. Some patients without the PD-L1 uh, expressed on the tumor cell also seem to respond, but not quite as often as the ones that have the PD-L1 uh, target. Gotcha. No, I think that's a, that's a great suggestion. I think biomarkers are definitely the, the way of the future here.